2 Corinthians 6, 18 says, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Almighty God. Holy Spirit, use me for a few minutes here just to say a few things that will encourage and edify. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you love us and that you're here for us. And we're so grateful to you for all you do. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. I like 1 John 3, 1 also. It says, Behold, what manner of love has the Father bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Uh, I don't know. I just want to talk a little bit today about the Father's love. I, I, I... I'm just amazed sometimes when I'm talking to people how strange our theologies get. You know, it, uh, I, I'm just glad for grace and mercy. How many ever thought wrong? Thought wrong about God? Thought wrong about... Uh, how, how many ever, ever were, were, were trying to do right, the right thing and you found out you were just totally doing the wrong thing? And, uh, you know, we all have... Uh, and, and, but I'm, I'm just amazed at some of the theology. You know, I wish that we all had the, the Ozzie and Harriet families and the Leave it to Beaver. And, you know, I, I, I wish we all had that. And, you know, but we're, we're a mixture. I mean, we've got, you know, it'd be nice if we all had a family like we saw on the screen there. It'd be nice, you know. But, you know, we're, we're, life, you know, the, the enemy has just, the curse has just, how know? How many know? It just messes things up. It just the world is just in a mess, and 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 you know we have broken homes. We have people here. I mean, some 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 of us are lucky enough to have had a father and grow up with a father figure in our house, and 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 some of us weren't. Uh, some of us we've got single moms that have to be the the mother and the father, and single dads that have to be the mother and the dad, and 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 we've just got all kinds of 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 confusion all kinds of messes and we have parents we have fathers that have lost children and children that have lost dads and and how, how many know the devil can just make a mess of things you know he can just make a mess of things but i just want to declare today that it really doesn't matter what you know i used to i grew up without a father and i used to i used to uh, for a period of my time in my life i felt sorry for myself you know and and how many know you can use anything uh, for a cop out i mean you you know you and i've used them all okay and 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 you can use anything for an excuse and but but you know what i've learned is it just really all that really doesn't matter because i got a heavenly father that cares about me i got a heavenly father that loves me and i, I don't know what your your situation in life is or has been but i'm telling you what you got a father he says, I want to be a father to you, and I want you to be my sons and daughters. A few scriptures before that, he says, I just want to, I want to walk with you, and I want to be in you. In other words, I want to be involved with you and, 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 and involved in your life. And, you know, I just see so many, so many weird theologies. I mean, I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about unsaved people. I'm talking about Christian people. I talk to them, and, 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 we're, and we're so confused about some of the things. We don't know if, if what's happening to us, if God's doing it or if the devil's doing it. We don't know. You know, I, I hear things like, uh, you know, uh, and sickness and, and stuff, and I, and I hear things like, well, God's got a reason. You know, well, God's got a plan. And, 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 and I often hear God's in control. And uh, how... Uh, how many know God can do anything He wants to do? He's a sovereign God. Charles, Charles, uh, uh, it was uh, Jerry Seville walked into Charles Cap's office one day and said, they were talking and he said something. He said, God's in control. And Charles Capps looked at him and said, well, in a sense that's true, but the truth is God gave us the control. And, you know, we, we, we hear all kinds of things, and, man, we don't know. 
You know, it's, it's pretty hard to believe God for your healing when you don't know if, if God's doing it or if He's trying to teach you something or if, if, uh, if the devil's doing it or, or maybe this is part of some divine purpose. Uh, let, let me just say today, God's good. I, I say, God's good. Some of y'all didn't hear me. I said, God's good. If it's good, it's from God. If it's bad, it's not. <laughs> Do you care if I just get some of this out of my system today? Now, I don't mean to offend anybody, and I don't mean to, 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 to mess with anybody's theology, but, but I just want to mess with your theology if it's wrong. You know what I mean? I don't want to offend you, but if the truth offends you, man, then get offended and get over it and get it fixed. And there's a pattern that goes over and over through the Bible, and a pattern that God is good. And it doesn't matter how much His children failed Him. Uh, it doesn't matter how short they fell. He always came back and forgave them and, and gave them a fresh start. And that's kind of the way He does with us. I, I was... Uh, but I was looking in, in, in Luke 15, and, and I know we call this the parable of the lost son. Uh, but, but I call it the parable, or I call it the story of a father's love. And, 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 and I believe that Jesus, now there's all kinds of story, there's all kinds of lessons in this parable, and I'm not going to try to give them all to you. I just want to take one little thing and just talk. I believe Jesus was trying to give us a picture of, of our Heavenly Father and how He loves us. Uh, we all know the story, the prodigal son, and how he got his inheritance, and he went off and he squandered it, and he made all the wrong choices, and he made all the wrong moves, he did all the wrong things, and, and, and he lost everything, and he's, he's, in the, he's in the pig pen eating the husk with the pigs, and he comes to himself. I, I just want to read you a few verses. When, he, when he's in this lowest point in life, this most disgusting place, especially for a Jew to be with a pig, and, and this, this, this worst place that he could ever be, the lowest place he could ever be, he says, he says hey, he said, I, I'm going to go to my, I'm going to go back to my father's house. And, and, and this, is, this is what he says here to himself. He says, I'll arise and go to my father's house and will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy to be a son, so just make me one of your hired servants. You know, the enemy's real good at helping us paint the wrong picture in our mind. How many wake up every day and you feel like you got the world... That, you, you got the tiger by the tail. I mean, you wake up every day, you feel good about yourself. You say, man, I'm important. I've got some important things to do today. Man, I'm excited about life. I, everybody, anybody here wake up that way every day? I mean, how many would settle for one day a week? I am somebody. I'm important. I'm the, no, you know, the enemy's got a great way to make us be down on ourselves. He's got a great way to show us our unworthiness. He's got a great... Did you ever notice whenever, whenever you're thinking that, that, that usually you have to work to pull out the good things you did, to remember the good things, but you, you don't have to... How many know you don't have to try very hard to remember all the things you did wrong? All the mistakes you made. Why do you think that is? Because you have an accuser. Huh? You have an accuser. And, and, and so here, this guy, hey, there's no, there's no question this, this guy blew it. There's no question. He, you know, I mean, he, he, was a, he, was, he made all the wrong moves. There's no question that he was wrong. And, and so, so, he's, so he's beating himself up. Anybody ever beat yourself up? Oh, I'm so unworthy, I'm not even worthy to be, I couldn't, I'm not even worthy to be called a Christian. I'm, I'm not, and, and there's people sitting at home today that wouldn't go to church because they beat themselves up and they said, oh, I'm just, I'm just, I just feel, I've just been so bad, I just, I just have done so much wrong that I, I just can't go down there, I just can't do, hold it, that's the time you need to come. 
Well, you know, part of, part of what you come for isn't just to hear the message or it isn't just to hear the praise and worship. Part of what you come is to be edified and be uplifted and, and to be around other Christians and to be around other people. And, and you know, the truth is, if you, if you get around some people like it, you, you pretty soon you find out that, that most of us fight the same demons. Most of us go through the same things just in different ways. And if, if, if he's been working on you a certain way, there's probably somebody else that he's been working on. And that's how you get wise to his devices. I love, I love this, though. He, 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 he's, he's, he's beating himself up. And he sa- it says here, he arose and came to his father. Now here he is, he's coming back with this attitude, this mentality. I'm unworthy, I'm no good, I've blown it, I'm, I'm the biggest failure in life. I, you know, I don't even deserve another chance. And he comes and he says, oh, if, my, I can, if he's thinking, if my father would just, if he'd just give me another chance, I don't want to be a son anymore. If he'd just let me work in the fields, if he'd just let me be a hired hand, I'd be better off than I am now. And so he's approaching with this attitude. But here's what the father's attitude was. It says, when he arose, he didn't just think about going back to the father, he did it. He arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, now <laughs> you got the two pictures? I'm so unworthy, I'm a failure, I'm no good. Uh, I don't deserve anything, I don't do. And, 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 and you know, the father wasn't even thinking about that. The father saw him coming way far off, and the father was so excited, he just, he just ran and grabbed him and hugged him. He just grabbed, you know how many fathers we got in here? How many know a fa- you, you love your kids, you love them, man, and you'll do anything for them? You know that old saying that when you punish your kids, that hurts me worse than it hurts you. How many know sometimes it does? Most of the time it does. And, but, but, but that, that father's love, and, and, and he, you know, here, here the son's feeling all unworthy. He's feeling all no good. He's feeling like a failure. But the father isn't even concerned with that. I love, I love what it is. It says, and, and, and so the father gets the, got the picture. The father runs to him and grabs him and is hugging him. The father's so glad he's back. And, and, and it says, and the son said to him, what's the son thinking? The son says to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and, in, and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. I mean, here, here the son, okay, now he's wanting to go into this, into this uh, mentality. This, this, he, he wanted to fall back into this thing. He's saying, I'm just no good. I'm just unworthy. And, and, and the father, I love this. The father says to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger. Put sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. My son was dead and now he's alive. He was gone and now he's home. Do you see the contrast? I love it. I love the father's attitude because the son's, the son's feeling that. He's feeling no good. He's feeling unworthy. He's feeling all that. And, 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 and the, father doesn't even, the father doesn't even pay attention to all that mess. He just, hey, tells his servants, come on, man, we're going to have a party. My son's home. My son's home. I wonder if sometimes we don't waste too much time telling God how unworthy we are and how sorry we are. You know, I mean, if you, if you do wrong, you ought to be sorry. I mean, if you sin, you ought to be sorry. Is there anybody here that ever sins? A few that don't. You, you, you understand the Father's attitude? That's God's attitude towards us. He says, okay, okay, Hank, I know, you, I, know, I know all that, but I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with being your daddy. I'm concerned with being your father. I'm concerned with you being my son. Do you know that there's not anything you can do that will make God love you any less? You might not like yourself, but He loves you. There's nothing you can do to make him love you anymore. He just loves you. You're just important to him. 
But, but I just want to talk about a few, couple things in here. The Father says, bring out the best robe. Bring out the best robe. A couple verses that I wrote down in Isaiah 61 says, God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's wrapped me with a robe of righteousness. Zach, Zechariah 3, 4 says, says, he's talking to the priest here, and he says, he says, remove the filthy garment from him again. And he said, said to him, see, I have taken your iniquities away from you, and I have clothed you with festive robes or rich robes. Do you know, that's what Jesus did. You know, Jesus, you know, we're, we're robed in his righteousness. Uh, you know, you, you, you ought to remember that the next time you're beating yourself up. Because just like God, you know, hey, do you, do, you think, do you think your mistake or your sin, do you think that took God by surprise? Huh? Man, and I hear people talking about, I, I think I've committed the unpardonable sin. And, 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 and I, somebody told me the other day, said, said, uh, said well, the, the sins that God won't forgive are, are, the, are the sins that we willfully do. Folks, all sin is willful. Huh? I mean, if you didn't know it was wrong, it wouldn't be sin. That was the whole purpose that, that God gave the law to Moses because the people didn't know that building the idols and, and dancing and having the orgies and all the stuff, and they didn't know that all the stuff they were doing was wrong. And so the law came so you could see what was right and what was wrong. And if you didn't know it was wrong, it wouldn't be sin. Now, I'm not saying if you're trying to justify and, you know, you're trying to make excuses and, how many know God's just got away? How many know God's got a little voice down inside? How many know you know? You know when you're not supposed to do something. You know when it's wrong. How many ever did something even when the little voice said, don't do it, and you did it anyway? How'd that work out for you? Not, not too good. But he says, he says, see, see, we've been given a robe of righteousness. And so, so now when the enemy starts telling me and I start thinking and I start listening, it doesn't matter what he tells you if you don't listen. But the problem is we all listen to it because we all know ourselves better than anybody else. And, and it doesn't really matter what he tells you if you just don't listen to it. So now when he starts telling me and I start listening and I start thinking about, you know, he starts telling you how bad you are and how much you failed and how all the rest of that mess I've got I, I, I'm, I've gotten a habit I just say yeah you're right I'm a mess but Jesus wasn't so I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give all uh, here's all my bad but I'm gonna take all God's good Jesus did good and so, yeah, yeah, I, I can't make it. I, there's nothing I can do, but Jesus already did it. So, Jesus, I just trade all my no good for all your real good. That's the swap. Is anybody here today? That's the swap. That's the, that's the filthy garment. He forgives your iniquities. You know, and, and I'm going to say this, somebody needs to hear this, this, you know, really God's a little bit tired of, of hearing you keep telling him the same stuff over and over. If you realize it is wrong, confess it and move on. Huh? He didn't, he, it didn't surprise him, he just didn't want it to surprise you. Just, just move on. Uh, I, I, I got to move on too. Cause he says the best robe. You know God wants the best for you? I had somebody tell me the other day, he said, well, I don't want too much. I just want enough. I said, well, I thought about that. I said, well, yeah, I want enough, but I want too much. I want more than enough. Huh? 
See, what, what, why, is it, why is it that Christians have fallen for this bill of good that, that it's better? I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want anybody to take this wrong. But, but we've got this idea that humility is living less. No, humility is really truly realizing that God wants everything for us. He's provided everything for us. And humility is saying, hey, we can have that and we can live in that and we can experience that because of what He did, not because of what we do. That's true humility. He says, man, put, get the best robe. See, you know, there's nothing wrong with having something that's not the best, but you shouldn't be satisfied with that. Don't you think he'd like you to have the best clothes? Huh? I mean, don't you? You know, I, I, and I'll, I'll hurt somebody's feelings, I'm sure, but, you know, hold it's time, it's time to get our theology straightened out a little bit. And quit using, quit using religion as an excuse not to have anything or not to try or not to believe for anything or not to excel. I don't know. You know, I've driven cars. I've driven cars that the bumpers were falling off and they had dents all in them and, and all that, and I've driven new cars. You want to know which one's the most fun to drive? Now, I will lose religious minds real fast here, and that's good, because I, 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 I don't like religion. I like Jesus. And he said, Paul said he was made poor so we could be rich. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that we ought to be money, money hungry and we ought to be wealth hungry and all the rest of that, but, but I'm saying, but I'm saying we, we, we hadn't ought to just fix our mind to where we're believing for secondhand stuff when we could have firsthand stuff. Well, the best robe. The best robe. He said, he said, I'm not going to get very far with this, I can tell. He said, put a ring on his finger. Give him, go get the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger. Now, now to me, the ring, in those days, rings meant things like favor, dignity, sonship. Uh, to me, it, it also means position and authority. Uh, you know, what, what, he's, what he's doing with this, and I, I got scriptures for all this, but, but we don't have time to just read scriptures. I just want to tell you something that will help you. But, but you know, he, 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 he took this boy that felt worthless, felt unworthy, and, and clothed him in righteousness. Did you know when you came to Jesus that that's what God did to you. He clothed you in righteousness. He doesn't look at you anymore and see the bad person you are, were or maybe the bad things you still do. He doesn't look at that. When He looks at you, He sees your garment. Huh? Gary was talking about getting a bathing suit, looking for his bathing suit. How many know we'd rather see Gary in his suit and with everything covered up When you, no, nah, I'll be in trouble now. But, 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 but see, when you look at me, you, you don't see what's underneath. What do you see? You see my garments. Is that right? When Jesus, when, when, when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. Huh? He sees the price that he paid for you. And he says, and he says, he says, hey, he says, put a ring on his finger. Did you understand that whenever, whenever Jesus, whenever you got saved, the Bible says in Ephesians that, that he raised you up and seated you with Jesus in heavenly places. Do you know what that means? That just means that he raised you up in his eyes, in his sight, in his, in his authority, in his power. He raised you up on the same level with Jesus. Now, when I think about that, it makes me want to change some things in my life because I want to be conformed into that. But God already sees the finished product. I was reading somewhere, did you know when they make a movie, most of the time they'll film the ending and then they make the whole movie to where it fits the ending? 
Anybody know that? Do you? Do you know when God, God already sees the ending of you, He already sees you, and, 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 and he's, he's trying to work your life to be all that He intended you to be? Do you understand that, 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 that this position, this, this ring that He gave the Son, what He was doing was He was saying, hey, this is my Son. If you see Him, you see me. This is my son. He walks in favor. If we could ever get a hold of some of this stuff, God, God, God just says, hey, I, I, Hank, I just want you to know who you are. I just want you to know what I've done for you. That's what Paul was saying, that we would get in Ephesians, that we'd get a revelation of all this. That we'd, that we'd get a concept, that we'd begin to see all that He's done for us, what, what, what our position is. The Bible says we're a joint heir with Jesus. Gave Him a ring. Gave Him position. You know, if you get up every morning and realize you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ, if you get up every morning and realize, hold it, man, you're, you're a son or a daughter of God, if you get up every, every morning and begin to think about that instead of all the mess that we think about and all the, all the, all the imperfections and all the rest of this, and you just begin to think, hold it, man, God's with me, His anointing's in me, His favor's with me, hallelujah, I can do it. Your whole life would be a little bit different. I try to send thoughts out every day. I, 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 that was a good idea when I started four or five months ago. But after four or five months into this, I'm going, man, you know, i got to come up with a thought every day. Huh? How many know you don't always think every day? Huh? <laughs> now i got to do it on purpose. If you're not on that, if you don't get that, it's on, they're on Facebook. And if we have your email address, we can send you those. But... but Realizing who you are, realizing the Father that loves you, realizing what He's done for you, realizing that. And I and I and I and I'll just I'll just get this done here. But but he says he says okay he says he says uh, put sandals on his feet. Uh, you know that that's the ability to go. That's the ability to do. How many know? How many know? God. God loves you so much that He wants to raise you up so that you, can, so that you can be a force, so that you can know who you are, so that you can walk with His power, so you, can, so you can walk in that anointing, you can walk in His presence, walk with His favor, and so that you can also, He's, he's got something for you to do. The Bible says that if we'll just believe in Jesus, we'll just trust in Him and give our life to Him says if we'll confess Him with our mouth and believe in our heart, we'll be saved. And so right now, if you don't know for sure that you're right with God, I want you to say this prayer with me. So right where you are, just say it. Father, I want to be saved. I want to be with you for eternity. I believe Jesus came for me. He died for me. I believe He rose again for me. I believe because of Him all my sins are forgiven. So Jesus... I make you the Lord of my life right now. I ask you to come into my heart. I want to live for you, and I, I need your help. So thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you, if you prayed that prayer, I believe something happened on the inside of you. There's a number at the bottom of your screen. If you just dial that number and tell a counselor you asked Jesus into your heart, we've got some information we'd like to send you and help you get on your way with the Lord. And we'd like to invite you to come down to Central and just be part of what God's doing here. We love you. More important than that, God loves you.